Hello everyone, I'm House Gnome Gaming. Welcome back to Frostpunk. Uh, we are going to be beginning the Fall of Winter Home scenario on normal mode this time. Uh, before we get started into this scenario, I just want to let you know that if you are picking this one up for the first time, uh, there's a few things you should be aware of. First, this is sort of a scenario in progress situation. You are coming into an already established town and cleaning up the mess. So unlike uh, the previous scenarios, you start out with some laws already in place and you can't change them. So you have to work with what you're given at the beginning. And this is a hit the ground running type scenario. I actually do not recommend that if you have just picked up this game, I don't recommend starting with this scenario. It is, in my opinion, one of the most fun scenarios, but it is of the original four, the most challenging scenario. So you definitely want to start with uh, a new home maybe the arcs the arcs is a little different it's a lot of fun too the new home is a very good beginner scenario the fall of winter home if you don't already know some of the mechanics you're going to struggle mightily with it so go into this one pre-warned that you're expected by this point to know some of what's going on and you're going to have to use it right away however with that said, you know, you're going to fail a lot. I fail all the time on these, especially when I started out. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. Persist with it. It's fun, it's challenging, and I love this game. And this scenario in particular is a bit brutal, especially when you get into the harder difficulties, but a lot of fun. I like to redo these every once in a while and challenge myself to see if I can remember how to do them and do them well and get as close to a perfect ending as I can. All right, so this is going to start out with a uh, cutscene, unlike the Arcs and the Refugees. So let's settle back and get started. To whoever is out there, if anyone, no. That we were here. We did our best. We, the survivors, doomed by our own mistakes, aware of the risks and the price to pay, we took our last chance. The fall of winter home. Our generator is malfunctioning. After our leader ignored the problem for weeks, unbearable cold and brutal repression drove us to rise up against him. He didn't go down without a fight and half the city was burned to the ground in the fighting. With the generator hastily patched up, your first task as a new leader is to restore winter home and convince people it has a future. Then you'll be able to investigate the cause of the generator malfunctions. All right, so that was the former leader. He has been banished. If you fail a scenario, that is your fate. You are banished. We're going to hit proceed, and we're going to immediately pause and start passing a law because these people are ticked off, and your hope and your discontent start off immediately awful. And so you won't be able to pass the laws that you want without first getting in there and raising the hope and discontent. As a matter of fact, that is going to be one of our very first goals is to raise hope and discontent. And if we can't, we will be banished. So let's get started. Restore the city. I'm not going to take time to read that because I want to go ahead and get some laws passed. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass radical treatment. This is one that requires you to have a decently high hope and, high and low discontent, and as you can see, our hope's terrible, our discontent is terrible. So you wanna immediately hit pause and pass whatever law they're not gonna like right away, because once that bar finished filling, filling up through the intro, you won't actually get to pass these laws. 
Okay, if you wait and read and wait for this thing to rise, you're done. You got to get it down before you can get any of these terrible laws. And as you can see, we will be given our choice of our purpose law later. They did not stick us with a purpose law, but we did get stuck with corpse disposal, which is fine. That's actually my preferred over funerals. Uh, child labor, safe jobs, and child labor all. Okay, so we have the kids working for us. Uh, fighting arenas and public houses already taken. I just took radical treatment. So these are the laws we're stuck with. You can see half the city's burned. Everybody's cold. If we go into the economy, uh, we have one outpost, which is giving us coal. That is the only outpost that we're allowed. We are not allowed two in this scenario. We're allowed one. Uh, we will be able to change that once we do some exploration. But for now, that is our coal production. We have a sawmill and a bunch of ruins that we can clear up. We can get um, wood and steel from the ruins. Otherwise, we have no good means of production for either of those. The sawmill does not have a lot of wood associated with it. It will not last very long. Um, we have cookhouses and a couple of hunter's huts, but as you can see, nothing is staffed. We have some medical posts. Again, nothing is staffed. And we have tents and bunk houses. And the tents are all chilly. And that is because... You can see the generator's off. We have six uh, steam hubs and we do have some heaters, but the steam hubs are not on and they are nowhere near housing. All of our housing is over here and here on this side of the map. And all of our steam hubs are on this side of the map. We have one steelworks that we can put in production. We have a cold number here. We have a cold dumper here. We have one gathering post. These are our food production that are unmanned. So to start out, the first thing that we want to do is we want to turn the generator on to start people getting warm. That'll raise our hope a little bit. We want to man up the unmanned areas. Uh, any generators that aren't near anything useful like if we turn this one on it's just going to heat up this area which we don't need we don't want those we want to start clearing out all of these ruins because as we clear those out hope will go up discontent will go down and you can see we've got a list of goals right here to start and nine days to do it turn the generator on remove 30 ruins raise hope to 50 percent reduce discontent to 25 percent now, one of the first things I like to do, and it's because um, you have to do this on harder levels because the difference, one of the differences in the normal levels and the harder levels is you start out with fewer resources to begin with. As you can see, we actually don't have a lot of resources. We have all these areas here with roads. And if you look at the layout of the roads, they're awful. So there's a lot of roads that we can get rid of, which is an easy, early access to wood. So we want to do that. We can get rid of... These roads. And get some early wood so that we can build a few things. Most of these roads you will not need to put back in later on. wondering why I'm breaking my roads down like 
this. Um, it's because if you do your road breakdown in a long continuous, you get more wood. Now, this particular road, I'm only going to take up to here. Because I'm actually going to put an outpost right there, a gathering post. This road, I only take down to here because if I remove this, this house right here is not going to have any power and I'm just going to have to rebuild that road back. You have to think about that when you're breaking your roads down. I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to put a gathering post right here and I'm just going to extend it over a little bit. Sometimes I do this slightly different, so I'm kind of thinking through where I want to do it this time. Production facilities going. The steam hubs will come on when I turn the uh, radiator or the uh, generator in the middle back on. So we can send a scout team out, send them to the Dreadnought. Steam level one. We have some technologies predetermined for us. This is what the previous 
leader left us, and we kind of have to just go along with it. It's good in a way, though, because we don't have to research all of this. So our food situation, we have 580 people. We have 300 raw food, which doesn't translate into much. We already have hunter's huts. We're going to do faster gathering for our first one. What we're going to do is first thing we're going to do is move our snow pit. I'm going to move it up here. The reason we're going to do that is because our snow pit is down here. And our current heat generation is three rings out. One, two, three. So it is within the heat range. We're actually going to move it, though. One ring out. To save on coal. Actually. Do two rings out at first. Because we're going to put... Children on these ruins. First two rings of ruins, and I want to make it a little warmer for them. I would turn the rings completely off and let them use their personal heater because at 30 they can um, at higher levels, but for right now we don't have to. We're also going to want to utilize gathering posts pretty early on to gather up some of these out of the way areas. One of the things you're going to want to do is get something going right out here, right away. Because we're going to need a lot of steel, and we want to get this steel ruin cleared out so we can build a new steel gathering posts. Also going to pick a couple of workshops out there. Get rid of that. Because we don't need it. Hook that up to a road. Got houses on that one, houses on that one. Turn this one to a workday only. Turn this one to a workday only and leave the rest at 24 hours. <clears throat> I'm gonna put kids gathering up as many of these ruins as we can. That's the first two rings. And as you can see, as soon as we started our time, we got a ton, ton, ton of sick. We've got 35 amputees. And our two outer, our two rings heated up, which moves them to chili, which means we'll get fewer people getting sick. As soon as we get these buildings built, Staff them up. 
All right. a resource depot out here. So that our full delivery can be made. All right, and now we have our snow pit. So we will take the other snow pit with our 54 bodies. And we'll dismantle it. And if you watch, you'll be able to see people carrying the bodies from the one snow pit to the other. Help the amputees. Do less harm. Sir, a doctor wants to talk to you about improving radical treatment. I was a field surgeon in the Boer War and worked with the Royal Society to reduce the ratio, the rate of limb loss in any hospitals. I believe I can devise a method that will cut the number of amputations during radical treatment. All right, let's get him what he needs. Cool. Excellent, we have workshop. And let's get this one working. Okay, we are starting to build up some resources. One of the things we want to do fairly early on is get some steam hubs out to these homes because you have a lot of people in this scenario that are living in tents with no heat. And this is an easy way to get your hope up. Also want to build more medical posts and more food. These are early on things that are just necessary. Faster gathering, the reason we wanted that is because that affects not only these gathering posts, but these ruins that are being uh, gathered up as well. We want that as quickly as possible. And the 10 degree drop but our steam level is researched all the way to level three, so we're not going to worry about heat too much right now. We do want more scouts fairly early on, but I'm not going to do them at this moment. I am actually thinking we're going to hit the resource depot upgrade early because we are going to build a lot of resource depots. The Dreadnought. The only Dreadnought we didn't disassemble. It's stripped of supplies and in need of an overhaul, but otherwise it's intact. As we climb over the edge of the snow-covered plateau, we feel like ants crawling over an alien landscape towards some gigantic beast. We stop at last a stone's throw from the Dreadnought to marvel at its scale. 
One of the huge machines that brought us here towers above us, cold and silent. It would make an enormous amount of labor would take an enormous amount of labor and resources to make it usable again. Yet it is still a reminder of everything that we left behind and of our journey north. We decide to leave it intact. And we discovered a new site. We're gonna take the food. We're gonna go ahead and take the food back to Winter Home. And then we'll start out in a new direction. All right, we are clearing out some of the ruins. Let's get our medical posts staffed up. Because with all of the sick we have, the more medical posts, the better. I'm going to go ahead and build a wall drill. Captain, some of our people are concerned about the low temperature in their homes. They require, uh, they quite sensibly point out that it's easy to fall ill when it's cold and ask you to address the problem. We're not going to address this right now. Um, this is always a trick because if something happens and you build a house that's slightly outside of a heat zone, you automatically fail. If you get a warm up and you turn the temperature down a little bit, but you do it too far, you fail. If you forget and you turn off a hub that's nearby, you fail. This one's not worth the risk ever, in my opinion. We've just used our first steam cores. Steam cores are a necessary component in advanced technology. We can't manufacture them, so let's hope that our scouts find them. I see. We have three outside of the one that we used. We are going to use one more to build a coal mine out here. That is the only one that I'm going... That's the only two I'm going to bother with. All right, more hunters. Excellent. Go ahead and build... Another first it's build gathering post. Okay. There. And then we'll build the resource depot there. Where else can we put gathering posts now? Okay, we've cleared out this spot, which used to have the uh, dead people in it. We'll put one there. We'll put one right there. We have enough for one more. Ew. send our scouts that direction. There are a few directions I want to go here. Soup would be good. Overcrowding would be good. Care house would be good. Organ transplant would be good. We have a lot of things that we could do right here. We're actually doing pretty good with our sick. 38 and 4. We've got quite a few medical facilities. Four untreated, 35 in, 35. That's total. I think we can skip overcrowding for right now.
We don't want to hit emergency shift too early, in my opinion, because our first goal is to get that discontent and everything up. And a lot of these things cause discontent. Going purpose would be good. But that requires us to build houses of prayer and stuff, and we don't have a lot of space cleared out to get those. They're more... Churches are more effective if they're around the housing because they have an area of effect to them. And right now our housing is surrounded by ruins. And so until we clear the ruins out, it doesn't do us any good to build the churches. And we're on a time limit building the churches. We have to build them within a certain amount of time. So we're going to save that one, although it would be um, the most beneficial towards our goal. Care houses are good for clearing out the medical posts. I like to build them around here so that they benefit from the generator's natural heat ring. We're pretty close to clearing out ruins there, so let's take that one, which will serve a multiple purpose of getting the people who are sick, but amputees out of our medical facilities, bring up beds. We'll get them into care houses. It will also cause half rations for them. So we can do that one as soon as these ruins are cleared out. This seems like a good place to leave it for now. So we will pick up next time. Thank you for joining me for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. If you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when new videos come out. Once again, I'm House Gnome Gaming. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. Bye.